There's a major event happening in the US right now. And one person from these two candidates will either win the election, Trump or Kamala Harris. Now, for you in Nigeria, you might ask, how does this affect me? Yes, it will affect you, whether you are an investor or not. As long as you spend the Naira, then it's going to affect you. And as long as we depend on the dollar to fund our transaction, either import or whatever you pay with your US dollar, it affects you. Now, for you as an investor, you also need to pay closer attention because in this video, I'm going to show you how to invest in Nigerian stock in 2025 because these two candidates, they are coming with their own policy. And whatever policy they plan to implement in 2025 is going to affect you as an individual. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to invest in Nigerian stock 2025 if Trump or Kamala Harris win. So here I'm looking at US election, intermarket analysis, and how it affects the NGS subsector. So pay close attention to this video because you would need it. It will help you to to shape or reshuffle your portfolio in 2025, especially when you understand the sector that will most likely be performing well when, when one of these one of these two candidates actually emerge as the president. Now, here is a disclaimer. So while I attempt to share profitable insights that have worked for me in years of picking winning Nigerian stocks, please do your due diligence before you invest in selected stocks or sector that I'll be mentioning. And note that these are just mere projection, opinion, and also my own pass a result of my own personal research. So please do your due diligence. So let's look at it here. Now, the US election is a key event to watch out for. Very important. Now, I'm not here to talk about who, who I want to emerge as a president and who I don't want to emerge as president. Now, mine is to look at the event that will play out if this person wins, and the event that will play out if the other person wins, and then be able to align my portfolio and then see how. I can profit from their um, their policy. Now, the US election is a key event to watch out for. Trump's win, which is expected to come with trade tariff with China and other European country, um, could lead to higher inflation and a proposed corporate tax cost cut may boost earnings. These events are expected to strengthen the USD. You know, um, let me show you some headline right here. Now, look at this here. This was um, six days ago. Europe will pay a big price. Trump wants on tariff. So Trump is coming with tariff. And his claim is that um, European nations or countries are not buying as much as U.S. is buying from them, meaning that they are making money off U.S. Um, markets, but the U.S. is not making as much as they want. So And it's going to give them condition. And the condition is that they have to buy up to a certain amount before they can consider a lower tariff. So look at what the guy is saying. Now, Republican U.S. presidential candidate Donald Trump said on Tuesday, the European Union would pay a big price for not buying enough American exports if he won the November 5 election. I'll tell you what, the European nation sounds so nice, so lovely, right? All the nice European little countries that get together. Trump said during a rally on battleground states and all that. So let's me come down to um, where, yes, he said, they don't take our cars. They don't take our farm products. They sell millions and millions of cars in the United States. No, no, no. They are going to have to pay a big price. Trump has vowed to impose a 10% tariff on imports from all countries and 60% duties on imports from China. You know, during his administration, trade war with China was a major, major point, major point, major thing that if you follow the market, you would not forget. And that trade war led to uncertainty. So here he's looking at 10% tariff on import from all countries. So if you're going to be selling to the US, then it means you should be ready to pay 10% tariff on that product. And then from China, he's looking at 60 so I'm not here to go deeper into the cruise of the tariff and all that. But the overall end point is that if if you start imposing this tariff now, it means that the price of products in the US is going to be a lot more higher. And that will lead to inflation. Now, the other way around is that if you're a manufacturer in the US, as long as you manufacture in the US, you're not going to be, you're not going to be exposed to the tariff. Now, number two is that you're going to enjoy a corporate tax cut from 21% to 15%. So, and that's a way to boost earning. And it was projected that 
if that policy is implemented, it's going to boost corporate earnings in the US by that. So meaning that if, if you are going to manufacture in the US, you're going to enjoy a corporate tax cut. So that corporate tax cut is only limited to companies that produces in the US. If you produce outside the US, you may not have access to that benefit. So overall, it's going to strengthen the US economy because number one, by imposing tax on imported products, is encouraging local consumption. That's what it means. So rather than buying an imported product, you rather go buy the one that is manufactured in the US because it's cheaper. And number two, because those companies are also enjoying tax cuts, that means they're going to, there's going to be excess cash in the US. So, and that's going to boost corporate earnings. And if that boosts corporate earnings, what happened? You see bonus, higher pay, hourly pay, hourly uh, pay, then inflation will set in. That's the thing. And inflation setting in the US, the US Fed is now going to find a way to fight that inflation maybe by increasing interest rates so overall it's expected that the dollar will strengthen because an increase in interest rates in the u.s will make the 10-year 10 10-year 10 bond need to be attractive so well, that's why i said that trump's um win will be stronger for the u.s dollar because of this uh, policy now kamala harris win what happened will lead to ease so it's expected that policy will lead to ease that means the ease that we have seen right now we continue because more or less like continuation of what is going on right now since it's also part of the current administration so here kamala harris win will lead to ease in us dollar and which is like a continuation of government policy like i said now she's proposing an increase in tax from 21 percent to 28 percent or thereabouts now this is better to squeeze corporate earning now when you increase tax you squeeze corporate earning and when you squeeze corporate earning to reduce hourly wage and that would drag inflation lower because people don't have enough to spend people are managing companies are not spending as much so there's like going to be uh fewer money chasing um good, unlike inflation where you say more money chasing few goods yeah you're going to have fewer money chasing few goods which means that the price of things actually going to drop because people will no longer be spending as much as they want and then a lot of manufacturers will also find a way to reduce their output because wages are not high so that's my explanation on what the policy will lead to so and us fed will continue its monetary policy easing which is bullish for stock and riskier assets like gold so that means in the short run trump policy is going to be bearish for stock expect the u.s stock market to crash to deep expect massive sell-off because of tariff because of increase in interest rates in response in response response to in higher inflation because higher inflation is not good for uh, stock because of what the US Fed will do now for Kamala Harris the ease in inflation automatically means that US Fed will continue to adopt monetary policy policy uh, policy easing and then that would probably tamper um any uh, market uh, crash so meaning expect the U.S. stock market to continue its bullish run. The market is already up by a sizable percentage this year, and that might probably continue if she wins, and which is also good for asset like gold. You've seen gold hit all-time high, almost 2,700, approaching 3,000 USD. So if she wins with a policy, gold might rally higher again. So you need to watch that. Now, how does that affect me here in Nigeria? How does that affect the Nigeria stock market? So let's look at it from this point of intermarket analysis. Because we trade dollar to Naira a lot, either you are buying the dollar or you're selling the dollar. So the effect on dollar will definitely have a major impact on US dollar index. And US dollar index is like an index that, mark, uh, that measures the, the strength of US dollar against major currency and then apart from us dollar index there's also an index that tracks us dollar against all the major currency and naira is there so so long as we buy the dollar against the naira how would this affect us because if dollar strengthens it's going to affect the naira right because people will most likely want to move their money to the us dollar because of strength and then they will sell the naira one thing i'm not very sure is that if trump wins us stock market might strengthen in the long run but in the short run it will go down now what will happen is that other markets would definitely feel the heat because when you start imposing tariff on countries or other European countries, expect European stock market to be affected because their earnings are going to drop because of corporate earnings. Expect the Chinese markets. In short, 
I actually think that the Chinese economy will receive a boost more when in Trump administration because of the tariff that's going to be imposed. So that's going to be affecting the Chinese market very, very well. Now, what is the effect of exchange rate on NGS stock? So let's look at it. Now, if the dollar is going to strengthen or if the dollar is going to ease, how would that affect Nigerian stock? So let's look at it from the perspective. Nigerian stock is made up of companies that are listed in the market. So when you say Nigerian stock, don't look at it from angle of one particular inventory sitting somewhere. When I say Nigerian stock, I'm referring to Nigerian companies because the stock market is made up of companies. So number one, um, exchange rate drives finance cost of foreign currency loan. That's key. A lot of Nigerian companies are exposed to foreign currency loan, like you secured um, USD from different uh, international banks or partner. For instance, um, I mentioned a company in one of my uh, stock picks for 2025, and that company was totally dependent on foreign currency loan, and they just recently paid that loan. Now, if they are still exposed to that loan, it means that when the rate is going up, they are going to be paying more in Naira term because by the time you want to pay that interest uh, expenses or finance costs on that foreign currency loan, you would need more Naira. So meaning your Naira uh, equivalent of that foreign currency loan will increase. And by the time you want to settle the principal to the same thing, this is actually what affected a lot of companies in 2023 when CBN devalued the Naira from most 400 to reach a high of 700. We saw how it battered most companies in Nigerian stock market, especially companies that are totally dependent on foreign currency loan. We saw a company like Cadbury swallow in an average of 20 billion finance costs because of that exposure. We saw the effect on Unilever. We saw the effect of even MTN today is suffering because of foreign currency loan. So you need to know how it affects the market. So this is one major point. Any company that is exposed to foreign currency loan will suffer, especially if the US dollar starts strengthening because of Trump policy. So we expect the dollar to appreciate strongly against the Naira. Remember the key word here is strongly against the Naira. Now, it's also going to affect impute costs because the dollar appreciates strongly against the Naira because of the new policy that will come in in Trump's administration. Then it means that Consumer goods company that depend on imported products will also be affected. So that means their input cost, their cost of sale is also going to rally higher. So a lot of companies are looking to adopt backward integration where they would uh, partner with supplier right here in Nigeria. Like Nestle is actually uh, looking to invest in farms, partner with local farmers to reduce its reliance on um, imports. You can see the effect on Nestle. Nestle has been battered. Nestle has been suffering uh, um, forest loss and um, as well as um, losses on its uh, bottom line for for at least for one year, two years right now because of exchange rates. Now, number three is that um, it's also going to help companies that have foreign currency assets to generate gains or loss on their foreign currency assets. So companies that have foreign currency assets, foreign currency reserve, actually going to gain. There's one company I also mentioned in 2025. They have a lot of foreign currency reserve in their book, and that is a plus for them, meaning you continue to see gain on their uh, assets, on their foreign currency assets, if the exchange rates continue to rally higher. Now, the other part is going to lead to FS gain. FS gain and unrealized gain, they are not the same. Unrealized gain is actually tailored to your account balances, while FS gain comes from transaction. When you buy and sell, you might invoice your customer or receive a bill from your vendor in USD. Now, the difference between the rate when you receive that bill or invoice them and when you paid for that bill, that is where FS gain, exchange rate gain comes in or not, which is different, or, or, which is, um, different from the unrealized gain. So these are the effects. So if the exchange rate of Naira to dollar is going to change significantly in Trump administration, then we have to look at the effects. So then your job is now to drill down to sectors that will suffer, sectors that will take the heat, and sectors that will benefit from this particular event. So now these are the things I teach in my early trader course. This is one of the things I teach in my early trader course, economic events how that event like this can actually help you find opportunities in the market. You know, I've always said it before, no matter what happened in the global economy, no matter what happened in Nigeria, there will always be a sector that is benefiting from it. So one of the major things I, I do is to train the students on understanding economic events, macroeconomic events. Don't be a stock trader that is just jumping into the market looking for random stock. Start from macro trend. Understand trend. It is trend that drives sector. 
It is sector that drives company and it's company that drives stock. Do you understand? And it's the stock that drives price. So if you start from that perspective, you will most likely be buying the best stock at every point in time. So pay attention to macro events. You can see how I have a shared macro event that will likely affect the market. And then this has helped me to understand sectors that I should pay attention to going forward. Now, top sectors to watch in the market. The top sectors to watch in the market are the things I'm going to be sharing uh, shortly based on who wins and who loses. So let's start with the first one. If Trump wins the election, Trump's win, what is the implication in the market? You now, remember what we said, Trump win will strengthen the dollar in the long run. And I'm, I'm interested in what will happen in the long run, at least in four years of his administration, not what will happen in one week or two weeks. So if Trump win is expected to strengthen the dollar because of um, increase in patronage of local production, why? Because if you produce in the US, you're going to be exempted from tariff. It's only company that buys that import. And it's, again, for producing in the US, you're going to enjoy the corporate tax cuts. Now, that automatically means there's going to be a boost in production, boost in corporate earning. Now, that will also help strengthen the US economy in the long run. And that was, that's a major boost for the US dollar. And that is actually going to affect the Naira demand too, because a lot of investors that have um, Naira exposure right now we might, we might want to reshuffle to put their money in US dollar. So now it's going to help financial institutions with foreign asset exposure generate higher FS gain or unrealized gain from their foreign currency portfolio. So any institution, financial institution that have foreign currency exposure, expect them to benefit from this particular event because as the dollar strengthens strongly against the Naira because of its policy, then anybody that has foreign currency assets is also expected to benefit from it. Now, number two is going to drive CBN to adopt more tightening. You know, when the dollar is strengthening, the, the temptation here is that foreign portfolio investors that are already in Nigeria might want to move their assets into the USD because of the strength, carry traders especially. Now, CBN might not be tempted to adopt more monetary policy tightening to make the Naira attractive, which may crash the stock market faster. So I am also thinking that Nigerian stock markets generally might dump hard during Trump administration. We might expect a bearish market very soon because by adopting a more monetary policy tightening, why is CBN adopting monetary policy tightening? Because they want to make the Naira attractive against the dollar. And by making Naira more attractive, rates might even increase beyond 27.25% that we are seeing today. And the rate being more attractive into, imagine interest rate hitting 28, 29, 30%. There's going to be massive exodus of funds out of the stock market. Funds are going to move from stock markets into fixed income markets. Now, the reason the CBN is doing it is to keep foreign investors because the dollar is going to be a lot more attractive. And now these guys are tempted to sell the Naira to move into the US market. Now, for the CBN to tempt them to stay back, it has to they have to increase monetary policy rates. And this will not be good for business. Already, the one that we have seen so far is not even good for lending. Now, it's not even good for semis. So here, we're now looking at CBN adopting a stricter monetary policy because they want to make the Naira attractive. And as rates go higher, what happened? The stock market might experience massive sell-off. Just know this. Now, banks, insurance, and investment stocks benefiting from FX and attractive yield on money market fund might also benefit from it. So banks would also benefit from it, insurance and investment firms. So even if we're going to expect a drain in uh, volume of stock traded because of the attractive nature of money markets. Now, banks are exposed, insurance are exposed, investment stock are exposed to money markets. So I also anticipate a rally in the banking sector or banking index generally. Already I'm seeing an uptick on banking sector index right now. You can see an uptick in bank. Well, I'm not saying the uptick is driven by, my, by who we win, but the uptick is driven here by expectation that there's going to be um, more money in the banking sector. Like, number one, from the recapitalization, banks are going to be a lot more stronger, number one. Number two, again, is that banks are generating a lot of money from the high interest rate environment, just like you see. So imagine that the CBN is adopting a stricter or um, increasing interest rate further just to make the Naira attractive. That means the banks are going to profit more. But the major downside of higher interest rate is increase in non-performing loan. 
increase in impairment because loans are high. Some SMEs will just want to assess the loan because they need money urgently. But to pay back, that might be a problem. So it's going to be increase in um in versus interest in banking stuff. At the same time, a lot of banks will definitely experience increase in non-performing loan because not everybody will be able to pay back that loan at that higher rate. So I hope you can see the trend and how they are being connected and all that. So that's my own projection and what I think will happen. Now, if Kamala wins, this is what I think. Now, the CBN has already started adopting monetary policy tightening. Now, in Kamala's administration, they don't expect the CBN to drop interest rates. So you might probably expect me to say, oh, CBN will reduce interest rates. CBN may not reduce interest rates. Now, CBN may adopt a softer monetary policy tightening. So the key word here is soft. Now, for Trump administration, it may be strong. Why for Kamala Harris win will be soft? Soft means that CBN might decide to hot rate hike going forward because already in the US, with this uh, current administration, which this particular candidate is part of, they've already been cutting rates. They are looking to adopt rate cuts. So why increase rate further? when your counterpart, when the other countries are considering reducing interest rates. So that means CBM might probably maintain softer monetary policy stance and not look to increase every now and then. So since the US Fed is planning to cut rates, expect the CBM to adopt a softer monetary policy tightening. Now, sure, uh, foreign investors participation, sorry, please for this error, foreign investors participation in our markets, fixed income markets, we increase expect this to increase foreign investor participation in our local market why will it increase now in the u.s already which um the administration is this um, lady is already part of the administration kamala harris now u.s fed is already adopting monetary policy uh, policy easing right now which is already making the dollar to weaken a little bit now if the dollar weakens down now further because of lower rates hike now foreign investors will now look for country with attractive rates. And that's where Nigeria comes in here. So they will most likely want to come in to buy into our fixed income asset, like treasury bill, but in short, the bulk of the fixed income assets for fixed income instrument of the government right now is actually owned by foreign investors. And that's what CBN is looking to achieve. Bring them in, bring the dollar and the US dollar to strengthen the Naira. So if foreign investors are coming in, now, some part of their fund might also be channeled to the stock market. So I also anticipate increased investors' participation in our local stock market if Kamala Harris wins the election. So because he's been adopt she's been adopting monetary policy, he's been um, looking for inflation to, to deep. And then if you also look at the fact that she's planning to increase corporate tax, by increasing corporate tax, what happened again? A lot of companies in the US will suffer. Inflation will go down. So inflation goes down, the Fed, the Fed will also find a way to reduce interest rates just to um, encourage them to have access to more funds. Because when you increase corporate tax and now you're not reducing interest rates again, it means you are giving them access to more funds at a cheaper rate. So that would automatically boost um, that will automatically boost uh, demand for the uh, sorry, the stock market. I mean, so expect the stock market to go up in the long run. Yeah. Yeah, when I'm talking about stock market, I'm talking about the Nigerian stock market here. So expect the Nigerian stock market. Foreign investors participation in our markets and fixed income markets and Nigerian stock markets will increase. This is what I mean. Now, a lower rate in the US makes Naira attractive because of carry trade, interest rate differentials. So this move may strengthen the Naira in short term. But note, at the end of the day, economic fundamentals plays a larger role in the long-term trend. So no matter what happened in the US, if the fundamentals of Nigeria economy is still shaky, Naira will continue to lose in the long run. So my long run here is looking beyond five years, 10 years, um, 15 years, 20 years. So all this I'm saying are just between one to four years because that's when the administration will be um, expired and they're looking to continue again, fine. We'll look at what the new policy they are coming with. So everything I'm sharing now is just within a space of one to four years right now. So overall, Kamala Harris win might probably increase participation in the general stock market, while Trump win would definitely lead to exodus of fund out of stock because of CBN tight monetary policy stance. So that's the major difference impact that this win we have in Nigerian stock. So please note that. So we're looking at participation and then if foreign investors increase participation in Nigerian stock, that means we're expecting stock prices to go up. 
If foreign investors reduce participation in Nigerian stock, then expect the market to dip. So that's the difference between um, the win from both uh, candidates. So here, I also talked about um, foreign, um, the here, okay, let's go back to this point. So I, was, I talked about a, a boost in Nigerian Naira, which might help foreign uh, consumer goods stock that are largely exposed to foreign exchange loan and import to recover faster. A lot of companies are suffering. So now they are in the recovery mode. So if Trump comes in, it's going to be difficult for them to recover because dollar will strengthen more against the Naira. But if Kamala Harris continues what this admission has started and what this part that they are on, then recovery on foreign on consumer goods stock would also con continue in its uh, in the pace that it has started. So expect swift recovery. Expect some of them to restructure. Expect some of them to probably find a way to um, reduce their exposure to foreign currency loan. So that's what I think. Now, irrespective of who wins, there is a major risk that you should be watching out for irrespective of who win. Now, this particular risk that I mentioned, that I'm going to mention right now, whether Trump win, whether Kamala Harris win, this risk will definitely affect the market. So here, and then I'll tell you the sector that will benefit if this risk eventually plays out. Now, irrespective of who, who win, an escalation in the Middle East crisis that will drag Iran to be actively involved might disrupt crude supply. So watch this risk. This is a major risk. Whether Trump wins, whether Kamala Harris wins, if this major, if this risk escalates, if this event escalates and Iran infrastructure, actually oil infrastructure is being affected, then you expect crude oil price to surge higher. So read this as called from CB, uh, CNBC. Now, Iran, which is a major member, which is a member of OPEC, is a key player in the global oil markets. It produces almost 4 million barrels of crude oil per day, and an estimated 4% of the world supply could be at risk if Iran's oil infrastructure becomes a target for Israel. Note this, 4% of world supply could be at risk if Iran in oil infrastructure becomes a target for Israel, as the latter considers a counter move. Now, a senior energy analyst um, at um, MST raised the potential of Iran's Kag Island, which is responsible for 90% of the country's crude oil export becoming a target. So this is a major risk. So if Trump wins or Kamala Harris wins, this is a risk that is staring at us right now. And if this risk plays out, if it plays out or materializes, this is what I think will happen. Higher crude oil price will boost crude oil sales. Remember, we're looking at the effect of all this in our local markets right here. Now, higher crude oil price will boost crude sales, but with its attendant increase in petrol price, I think oil and gas sector will benefit. So this is going to favor oil and gas uh, sector. So oil stocks, both upstream and downstream, are going to benefit in the long run if this risk materializes. Now, when oil stocks are, are going up, when oil prices are going up, banking stock will also rally on improved asset quality. A lot of people don't know that banks are actually tied to oil sector. Why? Because of bank loan. So let's see bank loan to oil sector. I want to show you something. I want to show you something. Okay, look at this. Look at this. The oil and gas is a major recipient of bank loan in Nigeria. And banks have increased their lending to the sector in recent years. So look at this point now, lending to oil and gas sector. In the first quarter of 2024, the oil and gas sector received about 28% of total lending from the banking sector in Nigeria, which was over 14.1 trillion. Can you see here? 14.7 trillion. Now, bank exposure. In 2023, First Bank, Zenit Bank, GT Bank were all top three banks lending to the oil and gas sector. First bank exposure to the sector was 2.19 trillion. Zenit Bank was 2.1. GTCO was two trillion. Now you can see the bank lending. Can you see here? So banks consider many credit factor when lending to oil and gas sector, including management, engineering, blah blah. blah. Now look at this point again in May. Bank lending to oil firm hit seven trillion, says CBN. So if an average of twenty eight percent, can you see here? Nigerian oil and gas hold twenty eight percent of bank credit. So if twenty eight percent of bank loan is exposed to oil and gas. Now, 
if oil and gas goes up, an increase in oil and gas is positive because this asset quality we're looking at here is loan and advances. So it means 28% of total bank loan will be recoverable. That's the advantage. That's the asset quality I'm talking about. That means banks will be able to recover at least a significant portion of their loan or exposure to that sector, which is good. And when they recover their loan, what happened? It boosts interest income of the bank. 28%, that's the highest. That's why a bank cannot afford to lose if oil prices go down. So that's why they make provision. We call it a prudential concept, the payments. So when crude oil crashes, it becomes a risk for banking stock. When crude oil is running higher. So I think that might also be another reason we're seeing a surge because such expected boosts in crude price, if that risk materializes, is good for banking stock. So two sectors we have pointed out here, oil and gas and banking stock, if the risk materializes. Now, global inflation because of increase in oil and gas may surge. Do you understand? Global uh, may surge. Now, this global inflation surge will now pause U.S. Fed rate cuts. U.S. Fed has started um, increasing, reducing interest rates. Because of the resurgence of inflation right now, they might now pause these rate cuts. Hence, hence pushing the 10-year yield higher. Now, 10-year yield right now is looking at the average yield in the U.S. market, 10-year treasury. Now, it's more or less like um, money market and the bond market right here. So, it's more like FGM bond. So, the way you invest in NGM bond. FGM bond, that's how you invest in U.S. 10-year treasury yield. So if 10-year treasury yield is becoming attractive in the U.S. markets, just like the way bond is becoming attractive here in Nigeria, who will move their money away from Nigeria to the U.S.? Just like we saw between 2021 to 2023, when U.S. Fed was increasing interest rate, we saw how that played out and we saw how that crashed the Naira against the dollar. So if this happened, it will lead to exodus of foreign portfolio investors PI is foreign portfolio investors. Majority of the investments we have in Nigeria, majority of the dollar that are coming into Nigeria are foreign portfolio investors, not foreign direct investments. That's why I always say that we need more foreign direct investments than foreign portfolio investment because foreign portfolio investment, they are hot money. Foreign direct investment, they are patient capital. Foreign direct investment will develop your economy. Foreign portfolio investment will not. They are coming to make more money. Any change, any shock, they will leave. So if these guys are leaving, what happened to you to increase in demand for dollar? So, and what is now going to be the effect? The CBN will now come in again to start increasing interest rate. And they will tell you they want to use interest rate to address exchange rate. So, meaning exchange rate might rally higher. And if exchange rate goes up again, who benefits from exchange rate? The bank. You can see here, because banks have foreign currency exposure. So, the major winner in this whole thing is the bank at the end of the day. Because you can see how the banks have been repeated multiple times in this uh, webinar. So, the banks are the winner in this whole event if the risk materializes so i hope this video opens your eyes i hope you got value i hope you got a lot of insight on this um few uh this uh, brief uh, analysis of how to invest in nigeria stock 25 if trump or kamala harris win if this is the first time you're watching my video first time you're visiting my channel can you hit the subscription button the notification bell because i share insightful videos that will help you invest well just like you've seen right here